Dr. Yolanda Brown. She is the double MOBO awards winner, saxophonist, has traveled the world with her gift. But in 2010, she was also honored with an honorary doctorate from the London, East London University. So you'll see her here, she's a beautiful lady, but she's not just a pretty face, brains as well as beauty. She's gonna share a few words about her success and how you too can become a high achiever. Please do welcome Yolanda Brown. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing today? Good. You sound good. That's wonderful. Well, uh, it's always interesting when you hear introductions of yourselves, and I'm noticing as well from all of the wonderful people standing on this stage, they seem very shy about their achievements. So I want to start first by saying to all of the young students, aspiring people, business people, even the parents and the teachers, the first thing, the first key that I would like to give you is to be proud. Hold your head up high. Think of all of those times you were working hard. A lot of the students, or all of the students, have had to take exams. Do you remember that 3 o'clock in the morning revi revision session? Do you remember that time when you were trying to drink coffee or trying to find your notes that you couldn't quite find and calling a friend? Do you remember those times? If you do, when somebody says how remarkable you are, put your head held high and say, yes, I am. You heard Sophia say, yes, we can, about our, our present. You heard about we had a dream for our future. So all of those things, carry them with you all of the time. Put them in your pocket because it's really, really important. It breaks my heart when some people have done so much in their lives, achieved so much, given so much, and when their final day comes, when someone says, congratulations, it doesn't shine. You have to let it shine, because after all of those accolades, all of those achievements, they stay in a cupboard, or maybe in a nice high wardrobe, but no one gets to see them unless they shine through you. So do you understand what I'm saying with that? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying with that? Oh! Otherwise I'll stop my speech now, we'll work on that. <laughs> um, I always get asked in every single interview, what inspires you? And I know we're talking a lot about inspiration this evening. And the thing that inspires me is everyday people. Everybody in this room is what inspires me. I don't really look to celebrities or celebrity stories, what's in the tabloids this week to inspire me. I look at everyday people, people that are working hard, people that have a dream, and people that are always working towards that dream. Not that they've got it already. People that are working towards that dream. And I remember studying for my GCSEs, taking a break, as you should, and watching a film called Pay It Forward. And it was a simple story about giving without expecting to receive. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that film. If you haven't, check it out. And it's about giving to somebody without thinking about, they're going to give this back to me. It's about giving without thinking, oh, it costs me so much, I don't have time. And it's hard sometimes to give. But I took that as, I want to be an inspiration. I would like to give to as many people as possible. I don't have as much money as I would like to have to divvy out. I don't have as much time to spend with all the people, but I would like to give inspiration. And that only came from doing the best that I could do, doing the best, being the best that I could be. And I want you to take that away if you can. Today, I am inspired by the people standing on this stage, and always think that you are not the last generation. It would be easy if you were, but there's another generation to follow. I'm sure you have younger brothers or sisters, younger cousins or nieces. Even, let's take it to your parents, to your grandparents, to your teachers. You are achieving things that some other people in their lifetime will never get to achieve. And so you are an inspiration to them. They will ask you, how did you do it? What did you do? How did you write that poem in two weeks, Sophia? <laughs> you know? But all you should say is thank you very much and continue to be that inspiration. Give unto others as you would want them to give unto you. 
all those great people that you've looked up to, why don't you be one of them? And also, for the parents, I like to call the parents and the teachers our superheroes. Superheroes save the world. They do. And I believe that our teachers and our parents are there for us in times of need. The times when we don't know how to get to the start of our Duke of Edinburgh Award. I remember that well. The times when you couldn't get to saxophone lessons by yourself. The times when you couldn't get to school by yourself. Who helped you? Who helped you when the studies were hard? It was our superhero. So can we give our teachers and our parents a big round of applause? I also want to say that it's not always easy. I know a lot of people have overcome a lot of triumphs, a lot of tribulations, a lot of hard times, a lot of good times, even to be here today. It won't always be easy. But as long as you see that end goal, what you want to be, what you want to achieve, the rest of it is just how you get there. You know, it could take a week, it could take a month, it could take a year. As long as you get there, that then is the achievement. It's wonderful to be awarded, to be nominated and awarded, and I feel that to be thanked for what I do, to win the MOBO Awards, to be nominated for awards, to be honoured with a doctorate, was all fantastic. It was never in the plan. The plan is still there. It was never in the plan, but it's wonderful. That's part of the journey. And I wanted to give you a testimonial or an uh, example of what happened to me. I always thought at GCSE times and at A-levels that I would be a management consultant. Yeah? Before that, before reality hit me, I thought I was going to be a racing driver. <laughs> People still laugh. That was my dream, damn it. <laughs> my dream was always to be a racing driver when I thought, well, I haven't, I haven't got much higher than go-karts, so maybe that's not the dream to hold. I enjoyed business studies and maths through my education, so I thought I would be a management consultant in operations research. And went through to university, I studied management science at university. I came out with a first, even though my A-levels weren't what the grades I wanted to get. I got into my dream university and I came out with a first. I studied for a year in Spain, I'm now fluent in Spanish, I didn't know why, I just wanted to be a management consultant. After I'd graduated, I didn't want to go into the workplace. I remember going to a graduate fair and we were all wearing the same suit. We were all wearing the same shirt, the same skirt. I thought, I can't go into work, holding the same CV. I can't go to work yet, I'm not finished. And so I knew that my research still had a lot to do, so I went on to do my PhD in management science. I thought, this is it. This is what I want to do. Little did I know that I'd been playing the saxophone since the age of 13, and it was just under the bed. I took it to university, I took it to Spain, but it was just my hobby. Never did I think that I would be performing. And during a summer, I thought I'd raise some money, and so I joined a band. The band fell away, and the manager said, I'd manage you as a solo artist if I could. I said, well, if it gives me some more money for uni, I'm on it. So I did. The next thing I was touring, I was in America, I was writing my own music, I was being nominated and winning awards, I was asked to play for the Russian president. And all that time I was still studying for my PhD, I was typing away as I'm about to go on stage, sending my thesis in, and then going on stage and performing to royalty and to dignitaries. And there came a time when I thought, I can't live this life, I can't do both. But my dream was always to be a management consultant. Before that, the dream was to be a, okay, okay. But I thought, I can't do both, and the music really is doing such great things. Everybody comes to me and says, you're such an inspiration, the way you play the saxophone is fantastic. And I'm thinking, yes, but I'm doing my PhD, this was just a side project. So it came to the point where I had to make a decision, music or PhD? Which one did I choose? Music because a passion had started to develop. I was getting more back, I was feeling the rewards, I was excited and, and challenged as well to write my own music and communicate that. But I'd been studying my PhD for four years. I should have been finishing. And so it was a bittersweet decision. But that path was still there. That journey was still going. 
And who knows, goals can change. So I decided to follow music. Two weeks later, after many tears, having to explain to my parents that I was not going to be Dr. Brown, I got an email from the University of East London wanting to offer me an honorary doctorate for my contribution to music. <laughs> and that there was a sign that the decision I'd made, the goal had changed, the goalposts had changed. It was the right decision. So I still could go to my mom and say, hey, call me Dr. Brown. <laughs> and for me, even though people see the outside, I go, I tour around the world, I do motivational speeches and speak to so many people and meet so many inspirational people, it's still in the back of my mind that I want my PhD in management science. But does that show on my face? You know? I'm still accepting and willing and enjoying what I'm doing now every single day. And it will happen. I will get my second PhD, <laughs> get my second doctorate. But who remembers that first dream that I had? Exactly. It's still there. Still there. I remember uh, I'd written my album and released my album in February, April Showers, May Flowers, it was called. That's a whole other story. And I was invited to BBC Breakfast to speak about my project. I couldn't wait. I was so excited. And uh, I'd recorded a part of a video in a Formula 3 car. It's as close as I could get, you know. And uh, they showed the video on BBC, which of course is nationwide and also worldwide, which is fantastic. And as soon as I'd stepped off of the set, I got a call from Ron Dennis. He is the owner of McLaren, the Formula One team, who was the boss of Lewis Hamilton. You know Lewis Hamilton, right? He said, I'd love you to play at my birthday party. And I said, sure, I do that all the time, you know, it's okay. I said, no problem. He introduced me on stage as the Lewis Hamilton of the music industry. I'm going to take all of that. But I still was looking at him and I was thinking, you race. My dream is coming back. And it's now that I'm actually meeting the right people to race. I now race minis and I'm working my way up to Formula 3. And my dream, my original dream, is still alive. But I've been through so many different journeys, so many different challenges, accepted the talent that God has given me and used it to its full potential that I'm actually able to live my dream. So what I want to tell you is it's not always easy. The journey may always change. As long as you're excelling, be proud of it. And use those abilities, those talents, those people that you're meeting, the networking that you're doing to excel yourself as much as possible. And of course, be an inspiration. By being an inspiration, you are bringing up the next generation. By being an inspiration, you're making all of your team, your parents, your teachers, your peers, your family proud. You're even inspiring them to do certain things. And by being an inspiration, you get to double check yourself. You get to say, I've actually done something here today. You get to look at your awards in that cupboard and you get to push on. So be an inspiration. Thank you so much for listening.